Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flowmotion. Because today I'm going to show you how to create a shot with a false perspective. So just follow me into After Effects. Hey, and as always, if you have any questions about anything in this tutorial or about anything, let me know in the comments and I promise I will answer back each one of you. So now let's start with setting up this scene. When I first placed the leather and the bucket, this seems like a pretty undoable jump. So let me show you some of the basics and physics and optics of a camera and how to use it for this kind of shot. So you may think, okay, to get the bucket smaller I have to zoom out a bit with my zoom lens. But zooming in and out of an image does not change anything within the perspective. So here's a shot of me with a wide angle lens as well as a telephoto lens. And when I put them over each other, they are identical. So now you may think I have to bring the leather further away, or even better, maybe the bucket a bit closer. But actually that's not how it works. The trick is to reposition the camera, because in that way the two objects will get smaller or bigger, but not as you may expect. When you move the camera, the two objects will get bigger or smaller differently from each other. And hey, once you know that, you can really do magic. Like Alfred Hitchcock did in his famous movie Vertigo, where he invented this famous effect where the background seems to come closer to the object. And this effect is now also even called Vertigo effect. And you can pretty easy do that. Just walk towards an object with the camera and in the same time zoom out so that the object somehow keeps the same size. In this way it seems like the object stays as it is but the background gets closer. Pretty cool. And you can also do that by not zooming in but only walking towards the object as this is way more easy to film and then simply do the zoom in post-production. Because also when Hitchcock did this shot back in 1958, he had to build the staircase flat on the ground in order to move with the camera through it. Mind-blowing. And a second thing you have to be aware is the aperture of your camera. Because normally you want to have an image where the foreground is sharp and the background is out of focus. To make it look more cinematic, but that will also trick your eyes, because once the ladder is out of focus, your brain will tell you that it is further in the back. So the trick is to have your aperture as large as possible, like maybe 8, 11 or even 16. And for the pros out there, a large aperture number means a pretty closed hole for the light to come in. And a small aperture number means a wide open ring. So do not get confused by that or simply pause for the next five seconds. Okay, now as we know that, let's take a look at the footage I have actually shot. And I've actually shot two or maybe even three different clips. I just didn't hit the stop button while doing that. So let's just drag out the first one, which is footage one onto that new composition icon. And I'm going to full resolution here and I'm just playing this back. And you can see me standing there, bringing the leather to the back. And as I told you, of course, I have positioned the camera so that everything will later on match. And therefore I tried to sit behind the bucket at first to really get the perspective and the size right. And for those of you who are interested, I shot this shot with a 24 millimeter lens from Sigma with a, an aperture of 
1.4 but of course I did not go to 1.4 because in that way the leather or the background would be so much out of focus that you would directly see that this is not a false perspective shot. So now when I play this back you see me climb up the ladder and jumping behind the bucket. And then I quickly went off frame just to get a small stone to get the splash going which we will later on use to combine the two shots. And while I'm watching this, maybe this was just a little too intense and honestly, if I would film that again, I would maybe use a smaller stone because just take a look at that impact. But anyways, so that was the first thing that I have shot. And here you can see me preparing for the second shot or the third shot. So the first is me jumping. The second is the stone in the water. And the third is me wet coming out of the water and you can see that this was a pretty cold morning and this is footage number two let me drag that out here and i have repositioned the bucket and this is simply because i took all the water over my head and then just took the same position and this is the second shot so now let's start combining all of those so back in footage one i am going to the point in time where i have jumped into the bucket which is about here so now i can set a marker here by simply going to the multiply sign on your numpad and this will set a marker and you can also click over here and that will set a marker in the composition so now let's just duplicate the layer and i'm just trimming that and scrub to the part where i'm bringing out the stone and that's actually the first frame. So I get rid of the marker by simply dragging it to the side, trim it to the playhead. And by the way, if you hold down shift while doing that, it will snap to the playhead. So this is really handy. And it will also snap to markers and also to the beginning and end of other layers. So really handy. And now I'm just bringing it to our marker position. And again, when I hold down the shift button, it will snap. Let's just put it here where my feet touch the water. And I'm just turning off the sound. And I'm just going to trim that clip. Hit B for beginning here. And at the end of this clip, I'm hitting N for end. And now I can just click onto that bar with a right click and go to trim comp to work area. And now we are only dealing with that. Perfect. So now let's just make this a little bit more advanced. Let's call this one the jump. And by the way, I'm just clicking on it, hitting return. And then I can rename it and call this splash. And by the way, I'm just renaming it here. But when you click on layer name, you see the original name. And when you click it again, you see the name that I have given here. But pretty different if you click on footage one over here hit return you can name it into jump in that way it will also name this one jump because they are both from that jump layer but of course this one's the jump and this one's the splash so just to keep that in mind if you rename it over here it will also rename it down here but if you rename it down here nothing happens to the source footage. And this just comes in handy if you later on search for the original footage or you want to use another take, you want to make sure that you have not renamed it over here. So I'm going back to footage one. So when clicking on here, I see the layer name. I know exactly that this is the jump, this is the splash. And when I later on want to find the source clip again, I can click over here and it has the same name like it has in my Windows Explorer or on my hard drive. So this is just for you to keep in mind. So now for the splash, let's just mask out only the splash. And therefore I'm just creating a big mask. Then I hit M to get the mask properties set a keyframe for the mask path and just go forward a little bit and simply adjust and simply adjust the mask. And I'm taking care that I have all of the water splash in there, but not my hand or my 
foot that just came out here. Okay, I still see my hand in here, that frame, so just reposition that. Now I can also hit F to get the feather properties of the mask and bring that up to, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20, 30 maybe, and unsolo this. Perfect. Okay, but now I suddenly disappear over here. There are actually a few different ways on how to do that. You can simply mask out the splash a little bit more. And now we already have improved this a little bit, but honestly, I would also want to see myself shimmering a little bit through the water. And we can do that by simply duplicating the jump. So hitting Control D, bring it on top, and I'm just simply going down with the transparency. You see? And of course, I want to trim it so that we don't see my ghost over here. So maybe just until here. That looks really nice. But another thing that you could also do is not to do it in that way, but simply have our water splash. And now I'm just going for a luma mat. In that way, I'm trying to key out the water. So I'm searching in the effects and presets for the effect called extract. There I have it under keying. So you could also go to the effects, keying, extract. And here I only want to have the white bright parts. So I'm getting rid of all the black parts. And you can also click on that switch here. In that way you don't see that checkerboard in the background, but on a black background. This just helps to see better what we are keying out. And I think this is really cool for the water. But now let's just feather this a little bit. And you can do that with that second slider over here. Okay, and unsolo this. And you see, after some fine tweaking, you now have a pretty cool mask. Now you can adjust the mask even more. But this is now really up to you. You can also play with the transparency of the water now, or bring the jump back on top, as we have done before with a little bit of opacity. So we see it a little bit shimmering through. And of course we have to get rid of this end of the clip. And what we can do, I can now also trim the splash. So now we have the jump and the splash. And after that, the only thing I need is the video of the water. So I can simply use the splash again, get rid of the effect and just bring it out here again. So let's recap real quick. We have the jump, then we have the splash that I have extracted, so we can see something through it. And then I also have the jump on top of it with a little bit of transparency so we can see it shimmer through. And once the jump is done and I'm completely in the water, I only have the playback of the splash footage. And before I close off this really fun, quick tutorial, I'm just going to show you the second footage that I've shot. Let's just drag it out onto the composition. So for that shot, I have simply masked out that part where the bucket needs to sit. And that's all you need to do here. Really a pretty rough mask. And when I play this back, you can directly see that it was really cold on that morning. Hey, and maybe you have also seen that I have included this freeze time effect into the original teaser. And while I played around with it, I found that this is so much fun that I'm actually going to do a complete tutorial just about this topic. So just have a look at this clip over here. This is a sneak preview of what I'm planning at the moment. So really watch out for that. So if you had a nice time watching this video, if you learned something, got a few tricks, ideas or inspirations, then feel free to give me a like, a thumbs up, or if you have not done already, subscribe to my channel, because in that way I can do way more of those tutorials and I really, really love doing those. But for now, I wish you a lot of fun with false perspectives in After Effects.